briefly right quickly so right here whale alert is putting it out here i got i gotta get this ready i got it i gotta hit y'all with this one a fee of 121 eth that's a hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars has just been paid for a single transaction bruh yeah a hundred and twenty who 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 for a single transaction Okay, so JP Morgan and them or Amazon, no telling how that works. But guys, if you really thought that the merge was going to be fixing Ethereum, it's not done. If you hold Ethereum, that's your opinion. It's all good for you. Just interesting that this happened. For, that's historic. Uh, first up right here, wanted to show you guys, Shopify is really getting their hands in the Tezos NF, uh, NFTs. Uh, there's a new partnership that happened with them. Uh, the uh, the ecosystem is actually gaining a lot of traction, but Tezos's energy efficient architecture adds to its affordable NFT minting. So that's the thing, of course, guys. Um, if you guys do have it, you know Solana is really uh, really popular for their low minting fees. If you have a you know low lower cost for NFT minting, and that's really what people are about, getting their collections out there, then yes, of course, you're going to be attracting a lot of people to your chain boosting its tvl boosting its e, uh, its the ecosystem so they've drawn i guess a diverse community of artists and whatnot ubisoft is the first to integrate tezos and its nfts now i'm sure you might guys might be thinking ubisoft also is a hedera community member a governance uh council member okay so ubisoft gaming giant want to let you guys know as well boom right now Decent is holding a holy moly donut shop of a giveaway event in a real way, y'all. Not not like holy moly donut shop, but for real. This is it. A giveaway event that is happening by Decent. It's going on right now, guys. If you guys didn't know, everybody if you guys didn't know for real, every time right now, everybody who purchases a decent wallet right now through, of course, our link, or if you go through Amazon, of course, save some money through our link, you guys are going to be getting 10 Tezos sent right to your uh to your decent wallet. So if you've been waiting on the sidelines, if you've been kind of just just, you know, sitting there like, you know, I'm waiting to get my decent wallet or you've just been waiting for that special time, that time when you got your ends right and you're ready to make that 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 leap of faith for cold storage. Right. This is the time to do it during this event. Now, this is going to be going on uh, for four four drops, okay? So it's going to be through November, November 2nd, November 16th, uh, throughout all of November, really, and then uh, through half of December. So putting it out there, guys, of course, save yourself some money. If you're really into biometric security, and as well, guys, we're seeing it, the Tezos, it's out there. We've reviewed it a few different times. How do you get involved in this? Of course, you use our link, get yourself a decent wallet. Gotta love that biometric security. And then from there, you just submit your reward claim form and they send it out to you. Now, here's the thing, of course, it's going to be sent out, I believe, 48 hours after well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another another event. But right here, right here, these are the times that those events of oh, those payouts are going to be coming out. So get involved. Now, next up for my IOTA holders. Now, if you are new to this, if you're just coming in from another channel, what we're really about is interoperability amongst the communities in the IS of the ISO communities. Um, so right here, if you've been kind of on the sidelines, not really seeing what's happening with IOTA, what's happening really, the, the newest development is Shimmer. They've now opened their Shimmer, Shimmer, this new, uh, gosh, another layer one, if you will, but it's built on IOTA and it has smart contract capabilities. It's feeless, first of all, energy uh, sustainable, all of that. So the ecosystem is booming. Everybody over there is just loving, you know, they could just print all of these different tokens and everything. So what you guys are seeing right here is not just, a, you know, uh, a goofy little picture. What you guys are seeing is this is part of the Sooniverse. Uh, the Sooniverse is what they have popping right here. So putting it out there, letting you guys know soon, Lab, Tangle, Tangle, Pang, and IOTA B have joined forces. The ShimmerNet will never be the same. Two of the most successful ecosystem developers have formed a historic joint venture. Soon is now the governance token of IOTA B and Tangle Pay. So letting you guys know all LP rewards will be in Soon, Sooniverse. As you guys see, it's just building. They're minting over there, guys. It's ecosystems for the future. Very good stuff, guys. So if you want to get involved, really, if you've been doing your research into IOTA, if you've been wanting to get involved in seeing, well, okay, I see what you're saying, Ted, what's happening with Assembly, right? I'm into IOTA. I see that everybody's in the shimmer. Let me get that, that slight edge, bro. What's happening with Assembly? Come on in. Come on in. Listen. 
right now, there's still about a few days that you could stake your IOTA for free assembly. If they open a new round for staking, this is round three. If they go round four, uh, hey, there is there is no timeline to when assembly will launch, okay? So putting it out there, friend, you still have some time to utilize your IOTA. I know you came in here for uh, XDC, but letting you guys know we're all about the IOTA. Uh, the, ISO community really quickly you guys can see it. They're doing shimmer inu over there. They're trying to get paid People are trying to get paid over there. They're really good stuff, man It's really good to see the ecosystem is growing Next up got it from uh, the doctor Martin Heisbach You guys know this is the guy the uh, community manager if you will for uphold He's the one that was really making sure that you guys had XDC listed to uphold and look big shout out to Do uh, Dr. Heisbach for actually integrating if you guys don't know uh, XDC was recently uh, upgraded to I believe it's called tier three for uphold you know that's that's the thing guys the XDC network has just recently received about 50 million dollars more of capital okay if you're if you're waiting for just some logical sign if you need some common sense or something to really get involved for XDC you really have to see the research for yourself and dig it people are really seeing this for itself Corda takes this thing on the leading token of value so what they're putting out here is the top trending assets of course XRP right here for XDC or for uh, uphold but I mean a close second 88.1 percent you know one one five percent buying XDC you got Kava uh, H bar and Casper that's all utility so clearly and that's the thing that I've really appreciated about uphold I mean you know you might have your feelings about you know them not letting you withdraw not letting you you know uh, do this and that but putting it out there that they are about utility. Uh, next up, right, Chia, my people, putting it out. Yeah, so letting you guys know, of course, that they are fully integrated uh, with Uphold, for sure, the XDC network. All right, next up right here. So I'm gonna be linking you guys with this important one. Uh, before I step into this, if you guys don't mind, please smash in that like button, hitting that like button. Let's get this thing to 200 likes, y'all. Let's have a party in here. This is an XDC party. The, mo the higher we get that like number, the more and more people will know the truth about XDC. You already know how we coming over here. If you're new to our channel, taste and see what the Lord has for you. All right, so South Korea to roll out digital IDs as banks push Blockchain driver licenses, y'all. Come on, come on. Smartphone ownership is estimated to be upward to 88% in South Korea. Everyone has a smartphone. The government, police forces, banks are responding to initiatives about what? Plastic driver's licenses. They don't want you to have anything physical. They want your whole thing digital. Now, it's no conspiracy over here, y'all. No conspiracy. You make your own choices. But I'm sure you guys are witnessing that there's something, something is coming. Something bank staffs will begin informing customers on how to go about receiving a blockchain powered ID. And when it comes down to blockchain powered IDs, just to let you guys know something that's going to be, they say, the confirming the solution amongst governments and whatnot out in South Korea. They say here, and I have to say this as well, these are smartphone based IDs, okay? They're called decentralized ID solutions. DIDs, okay, DIDs. They're distributed ID, uh, excuse me, uh, DIAs, distributed identity authentication. Dig this. Cypherium enables decentralized identity with Cypherium ID. Understand what we do, guys. If you're new to our channel, we're about the ISO community. If you if you haven't checked out our channel before, we were talking ISO from the jump. You could dig through our library, just hit the mix, do whatever you got to do to really understand and realize we're really about the spirit of wisdom. Dig this. If you haven't really looked into Cypherium, whatever you whatever you might feel about it, I got to drop this over here. I'm gonna keep it brief. I'm gonna keep it brief because I got some XDC stuff for you. Okay, but letting you guys know how you can link this with real world events. Boom, right here. South Korea is already understanding it. Cypherium has worked with China in a big way, okay? They're a blockchain partner with China and as well the Federal Federal Reserve here, all right? So you have to do that figuring for yourself. The only way that that's even possible is because they're actually a New York-based company. I'll, I'll, I'll probably dig deeper into that and for my premium people or maybe, you know, we'll look into that in our uh, community time. Now, right here, uh, putting it out there, this is coming out from XDC Community, okay? Uh, the growth and dedication from the XDC community to build out the decentralized docs has been amazing. 50 plus bounties completed for 50,000 USD, covering the basics of dev environment setups. Dig this, y'all. They've completed all these bounties. 
sending XRC 20s using EtherJS, deploying XRC's uh, 721 tokens using Truffle, Remix, all of these, all of these special features for devs are there in their toolkits when they come over to build on XDC. The great ETH migration, it, it'll happen, guys. For developers, I personally believe, you have a TVL that's high, okay? All of the DASL bridge. The DASL bridge is meant to really make sure that um, they can connect with the EVM. That, that monopoly had to happen, but now it's centralized. Amazon's not going down, okay? But 60% 60, 60 of that staked ETH is now owned by Amazon. So putting it out there, man, There's they're going to come over. They're going to build it on XDC. Personal opinion, not financial advice, but letting you guys know, okay? But yeah, great stuff, great developments that are really happening uh, out there. So this was another thing I want to say as well, uh, that thing I was saying earlier about Truffle. So I know there's big news right now in the X XRP community about the uh, uh, federated side chain for the EVM compatible, uh, you know, the EVM. So dig this. The XCC blockchain has been EVM compatible since Genesis, since day one. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have never ever seen downtime ever with the XCC network. You've never ever seen any EVM incompatibility. Okay, I'll say the old bugs. I'll say this: if you're really, if you're really a XDC head, if you've really been paying attention, there was some time I believe around Christmas or something they had to uh, shake out some old bugs from its EVM compatibility. So I take that back. But they keep continue to build. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about blockchain 3.0 here, my people. I don't shill anything. We present this information to you so you can do your own research. But dig this. This truffle allows you already to migrate those EVM compatible, those dApps to the XTC network, providing a this provides already a good guide and an example for those wanting to participate in the XDC ecosystem. That's coming, my people. Now to flip to the TED Talk money mode, to let's talk real money, let's talk crypto, huh? Putting ourselves right now to XDC, let's actually look at our current price. Your XDC is at 3.1. Your XDC is at 3.1, all right? Now to really look at this for the future end, I'm seeing some certain levels, certain levels, okay? I think personally we might be at that bottom. Regardless, if you're, if you're waiting for a lower, a lower XDC, the last time we were at this level was February of last year. Wow, look at that. February of last year. Now we're way higher. Way higher, guys. Come on. I'm bringing it over here. I'm bringing it over here. All right. So, yeah, putting it out there, guys, that the XTC network has been EVM compatible from jump. L1. XTC provides a near zero cost environment that's scalable and conveniently familiar. Loving that, bruh. Next up, if you guys didn't know, Reddit has some uh, NFT action that's happening. They're saying that, that that it just might be the Trojan horse. There's they're 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 connecting Reddit with the Trojan horse. That's interesting. Reddit users create three million crypto wallets to scoop up Polygon NFTs. If y'all did not know, so it looks like Redditors, and of course, Reddit is huge. You know, you guys don't know that, but you know, of course, Reddit isn't the first to, of course, allow uh, NFTs as profile pictures, but it has been more, it has been one of the more well-researched, uh, received launches because you have um, 3 million Reddit vault wallets to buy and trade NFT uh, avatars. Interesting stuff. That's, that's, I mean, of course, that's a, that's a, a community right there. That's solid. All right. Next up, I had to say some things here uh, coming out from Utility Theory. All right, so to clear some things up, when it comes down to it, uh, StoreX is the only, and I'm standing behind this, the only project on the XTC network that we're not going to be looking into. I'm just going to put it out there. But I had to say this, of course, we're always going to be putting this stuff out there to let you guys know what's happening. Utility Theory said, uh, StoreX, I got one node. I claimed 1.5. I claimed them. I claimed a month and a half ago. I just checked today. My current earnings are at 25 tokens. Now, he checked that a month and a half ago, and his five nodes have only acquired 25 tokens. He hasn't claimed anything since August. Where are my node rewards? Why are all five nodes true but saying they got out yesterday? So I'll say this. The only thing I'm going to say about this situation is that the reason why we're not saying anything about 
uh, store X is because of situations like this. Okay, they did early node and look into it for yourselves. They did early node holders dirty. They cut off like. Uh, a bunch of their resources or something like that. Just look into the details. But basically, if you were an early supporter, they cut off a majority or something of your nodes and you had to like update them, but you didn't get paid for the update. You didn't, you had to like get a brand new node or something like, like that's what I was hearing about it. So, I mean, if you, you know, just keep things neutral, <clears throat> it seems like it's not being well received. It seems like this is going over not not too well but some people feel like it has massive uh utility regardless guys this is decentralized data storage on the xdc network nothing obviously against the xdc network i personally believe it's against the people behind this token just putting it out there of course guys we're all about crypto look into it for yourself now next up right here for our regulation talk we're all about regulation talk over here because regulations are coming uh, it looks like right here, crypto rules likely to follow European models as U.S. fiddles, okay? Fiddle faddles, okay? The, the U.S. isn't really doing anything when it comes down to uh, digital assets like the EU is. And you have to really ask yourself, why is it the EU is just going so crazy on their crypto development? Why are the regulations so, half, so heavy and fast over on the EU? Because you have their ISO Big Bang right around the corner. So just to touch on this briefly, the U.S., Dithering and creating clear rules for cryptocurrency is putting you, uh, European countries in the driver's seat for deciding worldwide regulations as the world's largest economies prepare to receive recommendations for how to proceed. Now, guys, what have we been saying? That the MICA, the framework that the EU has been putting out, and if you know if you're new to our channel, the EU has has put out a uh, regulatory framework for crypto assets. We believe that the world is going to continue. This is just confirmation that the world is going to just follow right behind. Okay, so this has mention here of the G20 countries. The FSB or the Financial F uh, Stability Board has been working on recommendations for how the G20 countries and developing countries plus the EU should regulate regulate crypto again guys you have bg big you know bg's already said in himself that 95 to 99 percent of these cryptos 90 to 95 percent of these cryptos are going to go bye-bye you get what i'm saying now clearly they're trying to make place for bitcoin and ethereum clearly okay your xrp ripple what they're doing i mean they're they're flexing their business is going to continue to go well xrp is a vital part of their business right but what's happening here in the States, come on, I'm not even going to get off an XRP. But yeah, guys, I want you guys to see it. The regulations are truly coming. All right. So look at this. Look at this. You've got forward thinking jurisdictions like Europe and Switzerland, for example, who are very clear on different types of crypto assets, says the CEO of Quant. They go ahead and they mention Quant right here in Forbes. Now, recently with the EU, you've got the MICA where it's really defining what a crypto asset means and what a crypto asset service provider needs to do to access the market and to serve and sell to consumers and the businesses. I think what it means for the U.S. is really to play catch up. So, yeah, guys, I'll try to leave you all a link for this to really look into it for yourselves. I, obviously, guys, this is this is what we've been saying. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be getting. Oh, oh, I want to leave you guys. This, this is a good one. This is a good one. Uh, big shout out to Val Jester Locke. If you guys don't know, man, give him a follow, man. He really does some some good stuff, of course, for the XRP community and for the believers that are really out there. Uh, but he says, God did not take Noah away from the flood, but provided a way through it. Just let's just hold that. Hold that while I take you into our main piece. OK, but before we do that, if you just got up into this class, if you don't mind, please smash that like button. All right. Here we go. So. This right here is from Trade Finance Global, okay? Now, my people, I've been personally, again, really, really, really bullish on how trade finance is going to be affected by DLT, all right? You have the ICC's involvement with the ITFA, all right, the DNI initiative. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's really about digitizing um, digitizing trade finance uh, documents. Now, when it comes down to trade finance and really understanding what, what that is, we've gone over it in, in, in brief and extension in our library. But again, what really gets me bullish and why, you know, again, you I, I feel comfortable telling you guys that you have a solid, a solid play right there in XDC is because of the importance of how trade finance will work. You already have 
leading all of these other trade finance platforms that are already being built on Corda for the just the it's this thing called the conclave. It allows for uh, private information basically to be built, just all that private information to be built on the X on uh, Corda. But what's going to be the settlement token? What's going to settle all that information? All of those different things, the XDC network, you know, that XDC token. So that's one way there. And then as well, the platforms, for example, Trada, Trade Finex, um, um, who's the other one? I'm sorry, Trade Finex, and as well, Trade Tech, Trade Tech, all of them, guys. So uh, right here, I want you guys to see that these are the benefits right here of the digitization for fighting fraud. Now, lately, this is right here from a trade finance uh, global official publication, but it's really about this, about a trade fight. This is the roadmap here about the benefits, again, of no more fraud within trade finance, uh, within trade finance. Guys have to think about all of the the hassles that that are going to be met during throughout trade finance. First of all, it's highly paper based. So the question goes now: Well, okay, uh, who will have actual ownership of said bill of lading? Now we'll have a, a, a you know a, 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 a actual credit report or something like that. Something that actually needs to be done, or something to fulfill financing from exporters and importers. You know, paper based jurisdictions, different like uh, different languages, licenses, regulations, pirates, all of that. So now these are going to be the benefits of digitization for trade fraud to fight those for, to fight fraud. Look at this. Trade digitization has been a hot topic in trade circles for a host of reasons. Why? Who, and where has it been ranging? Ranging from promises to increased efficiency to its ability to help promote the UN SDGs. Now, again, guys, I'm just keeping it neutral. You can take this information how you want. Some people really feel like, well, look, Ted, the SDGs aren't something that we should be looking forward to or something like, hey, man, I'm looking forward to see where this is going to be going. I'm trying to get paid. Regardless, we're seeing the central bank digital currencies are coming, whether you like it or not. I'm letting you guys know that this ISO standard is coming, whether you like it or not. Trade finance has something to do with how you're listening to me right now. So why wouldn't we look into the solution for a trade finance? Finance gap that could range between three to five trillion dollars. Guys, that's what I'm saying. They're looking for the crypto market to be at least five trillion dollars by 2025. Okay, so digitization has a tremendous promise to help what cut back on the level of fraud in the ecosystem. Guys, and of course, this 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 ranges to a lot of different examples, a lot of different uh, problems and reasons to why you just might see fraud being mitigated. If institutions mitigating their risk away, mitigating their risk away from um, traditional means. OK, because that's what we're saying now. It's highly paper based. And that's the best part, guys. Here's what I really like about XDC is when you're dealing with a payment coin, clearly you have the central banks, what they're doing, how they can apply themselves. But what we're going to be solving is trade finance and global trade. And as well, we can do the dance with the central banks. You understand that uh, uh, R3 Corda has been involved in multiple central bank, central bank experiments. CBDCs are coming. OK, so we're talking about that ninja that could do both. You get what I'm saying? That hybrid that can party and take care of the business. The XDC network can do it. So I, I really hope you guys are seeing I'm bullish. I'm bullish. Many of the strategies for fraud that exist rely on banks in what different countries not being able to efficiently, effectively communicate with each other. OK, see, as a result of what paper processes, Ted, didn't you just say that? I, didn't you just say that it's all these different jurisdictions that they have to deal with? Yes. While digital solutions would still need to overcome the challenges of data sharing regulations, XDC Network does that through Corda. That's the thing, guys. So here's the thing. I'm not. OK, so I'm keeping it objective with you. How about that? Keep, let's keep it objective. I want you guys to be able to have. Of course, there's there's certain people in the class that are able to see where we're going. But I have some certain people here that want to keep things objective. Look, bro, I'm not looking for a high price. If this thing gets to 50 cents, I'm cool. You know, whatever, whatever. XDC Network, I made me some quiche, made me some bread. Fine. That is OK. Let's keep this objective. When I'm talking about the XDC network in itself, OK, 
What I'm realizing here is that it's that this just might not be partnerships that are going to be directly on top with XTC Network. All right, that's the reason why you have uh, the XTC Network being a part of initiatives, the XTC uh, the, uh, Network being chosen for certain things, right? Because it's it's in crypto, it's not exactly the direct partnership. It's a lot of indirect partnerships because it truly benefits the person that set up the partnership. You get what I'm saying? So it's this technology. That's what it is. It's no more. We're not. It's no more of this singular uh, use for uh, for solutions it's no longer this singular selection for solutions y'all hear that the spirit is flowing tonight you see that so data sharing regulations overcame with this right technology in place banks could be alerted if invoices they're about to approve for financing have already been uh financed by another institution that you know with fraud going on digital id uh digital identity management you see you see that guys digital id management you have to understand this, guys. Securitize, I believe it's either a global ID or securitize, already a part of the XTC network. Already a part of it, my people. You really want to look at it. Enterprise grade solution blockchain, the XTC network. We don't shill over here. Please do your own research. Okay. We don't you, you can't really get dis, uh you can't really get dis distracted by the price, guys, the crypto market, how how fearful other people are. I have to park my car here, guys. The FUD, it's a big F. The big F, fear, okay? Gotta say this to you guys. The world is is bred on fear, okay? So what you're gonna be encountering and what what's easy to find is fear, all right? It's fear, okay? That's, if you have, the, if the price goes up, yay, I'm happy, you're greedy. The price goes down, oh man, I'm mad, you're fearful. That's what it's about. That's what the crypto market is about. If we could turn the heat up a little bit, turn it up, turn it down. What we want you guys to realize is the DLT, the technology. Really connecting with y'all. All right, let's get into this. So right here, digital ID management is another area that will help financial institutions know who exactly it is they are conducting business with. Look into global ID, my people. I should have just looked that up for you. Global ID, huge. One of the biggest digital ID uh, solutions that are out there integrated with the XTC network. So if you're not really bullish on where you're going with this, because you, know, you have to have the actual research. You have to actually have the, look, I can't tell y'all what to respect. You make that own decision. Okay, but we're going to continue to show you guys reputable information for why this this XTC network really needs to happen, why the, <laughs> where its place is. So regulators are advised to take note of what the G20 roadmap, which we are about to get into, to enhance cross-border payments and the development of common message fam formats. Hold up. The development of common message formats. The development of common message formats before y'all stepped in here. I know y'all saw it. There's a reason why Lyft Capital, this thumbnail had to be made, y'all. Come on. This thing is big. One of the biggest changes to the payment system. One of the biggest changes to the payment system. I mean, my people, I know we got some, I'm, I'm not, I could be preaching to the choir. I know I could be. But for that, for that stone face, stiff neck, you know, objective, 10 toes on the ground, I'm not believing none of this, whatever. There are certain pinpoints and objectives that there is only one solution, one solution that is specifically developed for global trade, for trade finance. And now there is a development of a common message format, a common message standard for all payment systems, all banks, all since, uh, uh, central banks, cross-border uh, you know, institutions, financial, anything that's moving data, moving financial messaging, come on. That's the ISO change, data exchange protocols, and standardized data. I never thought about that as well. ISO, all that data, that's standardized data. That is standardized data. What? Come on, man. I don't waste my time with crypto. I don't, come on, okay, come on. So look, YouTube tells us, I'm letting y'all know, we have older people over here, they tell us the demographic, and I can, I'm can. i letting you guys know well, what I know about life, that the people that listen to stuff over here know about life. 
You don't want to step into this thing and really, okay, well, look, look, Ted, what's happening with Solana? Yeah, bro, it, it shut down 10 times. All right, yeah, no, I don't think I'm a, I'm a really, I don't think I'm going to hedge my bet on that one. You get what I'm saying? You, ah, come on. Okay, so moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Big shout out to your investment. If you hold Solana, I apologize, keeping it objective. What I'm showing you guys is this right here. We keep it official. 10 toes on the ground, okay? 10 toes on the ground. I got to speak this. XDC in the building, okay? This is the community. All right. The G20 roadmap for enhanced cross-border payments, okay? Think ISO 20022. Anytime you guys see that, it's it's called MX, okay? you guys, If you guys are doing your digging out there for my diggers out there, Okay, if you're doing your if you're doing your research, okay, dig that that in your Swift messaging when they're talking about ISO messages, they're called MX. That means modified cross border payments, MT. That's that legacy ish. Anyway, all right, so let's connect this, my people. So we've uh, actually covered this in one news update with you guys, I believe. Uh, but this is showing you guys by the G20 what they're really looking forward to in these enhanced cross-border payments. Now, of course, like like it's been said by a few goats out there, and like I've said it myself, anytime you hear cross-border payments, usually by central banks, you could pretty much think XRP, XLM, XDC, not so much. Obviously, they're going to be utilizing Corda. You could think XDC really for how they'll have uh, cross-border bridges and everything like that. Corda really makes that possible. And again, guys, we're so early to this game I'm speaking of with you. So check this out. So you can see right here by this diagram, looking at A, looking at A for ourselves, public and private sector commitments. This is going to be, be involving a hybrid, a hybrid chain between uh, developing cross-border visions and targets. Now, really what I want to show you guys is this. We're going to be defining common features, defining those service levels, have this hybrid chain, have something that could actually serve the public and private institutions, enterprises that are really making money. Okay, a commitment there. B, let's already take on regulatory oversight and supervisory frameworks, KYC identity information sharing. The XDC network, what I really do love about, especially these ISO cryptos, is how you pretty much have KYC baked in, especially with the enterprise grade, the XDC. XDC has KYC baked in as well. Uh, XDC, uh, I believe it's possible with XRP, most of them, Algorand, they all have mostly the, all of those capabilities. So the framework will be there. I, I tell you guys now, I, per, I personally believe for my people that listen here, for my people that really do support for real, I, we really do care about y'all. You really, it would be a good idea to actually have regulation friendly crypto, right? If they're talking regulation, why be on the side? Why be naive, right? Why be degenerate, <laughs> you know, and ignore regulations that are coming. We're showing you guys how enterprises, financial institutions, regulate regulatory bodies are, are suggesting putting up front these certain cryptos and a lot of their connections are happening behind the scenes they don't need to cater to the market they don't need to uh, give flowers and roses and airdrops to the retail investors let's hype up the community let's tweet it up now it's good to obviously cater okay it's good algorand is very good at that for their twitter uh algorand to uh, stellar as well have that ecosystem going right but what I'm talking about, my people, is that the bigger changes, the institutional liquidity that's coming, when we say whales are watching, those that know that the this is designed with a use. So, of course, you guys can think as well for all the X coins, really for the army of X, they all apply here. We're going to be promoting safe payment corridors, cross-border payments, but as well on and off ramps for crypto and fiat. So, yes, I'm just showing you guys that. Let me keep it brief with y'all. I'm not wasting your time. I'm not trying to waste your time. Uh, existing existing infrastructures and arrangements. Let's improve direct access. Look at this. Diru improve direct access to payment systems by banks, non-banks, and payment infrastructures. I believe I'm going to show you guys a little bit about that. Pursuing interlinking of payment systems for cross-border payments. Pursuing interlinking of payment systems. That's what's going on right now with Cypherium. Uh, that is just one of them. 
That's what's happening really with the ISO 20022 standard. They're harmonizing payment systems, interlinking, interoperability of payment systems. Okay, what there is again, we don't need 21,000 uh, other cryptos. People can mint and make, of course, you get what I'm saying? These chains can make them. But when we're talking about actual regulations to come about for these cryptos, and I don't think they're going to be knocking out retail investors to where they're using these for enterprises because they want their corporations. They want everyone else to buy them. They want to have that ability, right? They won't They won't get rid of their, their lifeline for how they're going to win. So again, D, data and market practicing, adopting a harmonized ISO 20022 version for market, uh, message formats including rules for mapping and all of that. So again, guys, we don't want you to get confused and think that ISO 20022 is strictly for crypto. I think that might have been the assumption. I never I never addressed that with you guys. Seriously, I never addressed that with you guys. Um, yeah, ISO, this standard, again, this is going to be the biggest change that's happening in the payment sector, banks, financial institutions, uh, money language, money talk, financials. They need to harmonize, but that's 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 what this messaging standard. That's what you're you're given the eyes to hear, the eyes to see, and the ears to hear, because you're seeing now the future. It's coming towards DLT. It uh, the central banks they tapped consensus, they tapped uh, uh, Corda. They're asking them. They're getting involved with DLT. They want to get involved. Okay, so this ISO standard is real. Harmonizing API protocols for data exchange. Why would they want to be involved with do that? And guys, this is the G20 roadmap. This is right here. The uh, the FSB, uh, Financial Stability Board, the G20 countries, what they're all getting behind in initiative. Now, and, and here's another thing, guys. We can really talk and really go in, in depth about the trade finance initiatives that are really going on for XTC. All right. But real talk for now, we can see for the army of X, guys, really uh, be be bullish for holding your XRP, your XLM, because they're considering this for enhanced cross-border payments. Guys, it's not hype, okay? APIs, protocols, protocols, those, uh, man, man, those are interfaces. So lastly, and last but not least, new payment infrastructures, new arrangements, all right? Factoring an international dimension into CBDC designs. Bringing it right there as well, guys. Of course, that's what it all brings up to. International dimensions into a CBDC design. So what I want to show you guys is this. The official roadmap right here. They're talking about it right here. They're, they're, they're telling you. I want, I want to show this. What was happening back in 2020. Q4. All right. Q4. And, and think about this. Uh, I believe XDC, the actual XDC network went live in 2019. The main net went live in 2019. Okay. Guys, look into it. Forked off from Quorum. Uh, XDCE, they pretty much figured all that stuff out. EVM compatible. And then they started their own main net EVM compatible chain. This thing is destined. But right here, this is what caught my eye, guy. I want you guys to see this. In Q1 of 2021, there was the beginning of the tech sprint on APIs, interfaces, and ISO 20022. There was the tech sprint amongst G20 company or uh, countries to start a tech sprint towards interfaces for ISO. Now, again, I want you guys to think about this for the future. There's there's already uh, 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 interfaces for this new messaging standard that everyone's going to be speaking this language, that everyone will be harmonized on these payment systems. Everything will move together, right? If everything is going to be utilized through DLT, okay? You get what I'm saying? Central bank digital currencies, they're all going to, it's all culminating is my point. 2030 agenda, they want to get rid of poverty, Everything speaking the same language. You can no, not to, you know, get you off, but one world government or anything like that. Interoperability. I, I saw that. They began this tech sprint. Okay. July 2021, stock take on CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. They began the implementations of these standards right here. These all of these different standards for frameworks and all of this. In December of last year, guys, I'll leave you a link so you can look into it for yourself. 
But this is where we're at. This is where the big the big stuff started happening. You guys see how how much more things became uh, real here? Look at this. In Q1, Q1, in June, the global standard for the ISO formats began. Global standard ISO formats. You guys can see that. Q4, 2022, completion of stable coin standards setting work for Q4. The completion of stable coin standards for G20 countries, guys. And we can just read this just in how it's how it's uh, written here. Long story short, guys, just so you can see it, uh, December of 2022 ISO 20022 implementation guide. They're putting that out there, putting that nextly out there. Guys, I'm, I'm kind of getting thrown off with how they actually uh, <laughs> had these numbers here. But long story short, guys, again, this is the G20 roadmap showing you really the flow here. All right. Let me show you guys this. Want to show you guys this. Dig this. And this, I want to announce this as well. There was a lot of, a little bit of a rustling, you know, a lot of people were kind of thrown off because there were changes in this G20 roadmap that caused extensions for uh, CBDCs and uh, networks. They kind of just allowed an extension. It wasn't really a delay, you know, but it kind of delayed everyone's expectation or expectation, but it was more of an uh, extension. But central banks, we're, we're exploring now uh, reciproc reciprocal liquidity arrangements among central banks. This is important so you guys can know the importance for how central bank digital currencies will work on Corda. And then as well, you'll see how XTC, of course, is that leading token of value. Central banks can have an arrangement with each other whereby direct participants in wholesale payment systems Wholesale payment systems, Corda, in different jur uh, jurisdictions can post cash or securities in one payment system. You see that. Central banks can have reciprocal arrangements with each other whereby different participants in wholesale payment systems in different jurisdictions can post cash in one payment systems and use it as collateral to generate more liquidity in that central bank in a payment system in another jurisdiction. Sounds like DLT. This arrangement is called liquidity bridges. Guys, come on. Come on. Come on. It's here. It's here. And they want this all to happen. This is all coming now. This is all new. Action plans. BB1, uh, BB11 aims to explore potential risks and benefits of these arrangements, such as reducing banks' liquidity costs by minimizing the need to have multiple cash and collateral buffers against currencies and jurisdictions. They're preparing all of this to be connected, guys. In the absence of liquidity bridges, banks need to maintain segregated pools of liquidity. Guys, I'm sure you guys are seeing it right now. Liquidity pools are going to be added. You can use your XRP. You'll become a bank. Sovereign digital IDs, I'm spilling the beans. Okay? Get bullish, my people. Don't fall for any FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt? Guys, seriously, if you've been watching this from the beginning, I hope you are bullish. I really do. I hope you are bullish. And look, whales are watching. They are watching the XTC network. Watching it. Okay? But of course, allow yourself to understand and know, keep that faith, be able to see that wall of money that's being held back outside of the crypto market. They want to shake you out, Rise, uh, raise the food prices, raise the gas prices, okay? Pump the airways with negativity, okay? Get rid of your crypto, forget it, man. Bitcoin's not doing nothing. Forget about crypto for a while. Meanwhile, they are developing all of this behind the scenes. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish, okay? I'm bullish, all right? But yeah, let's get into our uh, community time one time. We're actually uh, go to our price action. We're actually gonna get into some price action uh, briefly as well. 